Welcome to Senior High School Math Series. Let us have Part 2 of Functions under General Mathematics, Quarter 1, Week 1, based on Curriculum Implementation and Learning Management Matrix for K-12's Most Essential Learning Competencies. Here are our lesson objectives. Identify the domain and range of functions. Represent real-life situations using functions, including piecewise function. Before we continue, let us ponder on this. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. This is from Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6 of the King James Bible. Let's proceed to some definitions. Let f be a function. The set of all x coordinates of ordered pairs in f is the domain of f. The domain of f will be denoted by d sub f. The set of all y coordinates of the ordered pairs in f is the range of f. The range of f will be denoted by r sub f. Let us have some examples. Find the domain and range of each function. Letter A, set F, is the set of ordered pairs 3, 1, 4, 1, negative 2, 7, negative 5, 7. The domain of F consists of all the X coordinates of the ordered pairs in F. Thus, we have D sub F equals the set with elements negative 5, negative 2, 3, 4. The range of f consists of all the y coordinates of the ordered pairs in f. Hence, we have the range of f as equal to the set with elements 1 and 7. Next, we have h of x equals 2x minus 3. This is a linear function whose graph is shown at the right. Observe that the graph extends infinitely in both directions and that if we are to put together all the x coordinates of the points on the graph, then the values of x may be any real number. Thus, we say that the domain of h is equal to the set of all x such that x is an element of real numbers or simply all real numbers. Similarly, if we consider the y coordinates of points on the graph then we have the range of h as equal to the set of all y such that y is an element of the real numbers next let us have g of x equals x squared plus 1 consider the graph of the function g at the right Since the graph extends infinitely in the upward direction, we can see that the domain of the function is the set of all x such that x is an element of real numbers. Now observe that the graph of G is a parabola opening upward, whose vertex is at the point 0, 1, and that there are no points on the graph whose y coordinate is less than 1. Thus, for every number y greater than or equal to 1, there corresponds a point on the graph having such a y-coordinate. The range is therefore the set of all y such that y is greater than or equal to 1. Next, let us have p of x is equal to the absolute value of x over x. Let us recall the definition for the absolute value of the number x. The absolute value of x is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to 0. Negative x if x is less than 0. Hence, we have absolute value of x over x equal to 1 if x is greater than 0. And the absolute value of x over x is equal to negative 1 if x is less than 0. 
then we can see from the graph that when x is greater than 0, we have the line y is equal to 1. And when x is less than 0, we have the graph of the line y is equal to negative 1. In the graph, one can see that there is no point whose x-coordinate is 0. Notice that when x is equal to 0, the function will be undefined. So remember that 0 must be excluded from the domain of P. This being the case, then the domain of P is the set of all x such that x is not equal to 0. And the range of P is the set with elements negative 1, 1. Next, we have R of x is equal to the square root of x. Consider the graph of this radical function. Notice that all the points are in the first quadrant. This tells us that the domain cannot possibly include negative numbers. And so, the domain of R is the set of all x such that x is greater than or equal to 0. And the range of R is the set of all y such that y is greater than or equal to 0. In the previous examples, the graph of functions aided us in finding the domain and the range. This time, let us consider finding the domain of a function without sketching its graph. Letter A, we have f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 3. The function f has no denominator, nor does it involve any nth root, where n is even. We also observe that no matter what real number we substitute for x, we will always find a corresponding real number for y. Therefore, the domain of f is the set of all x such that x is the element of real number. Next, we have f of x is equal to x over x minus x squared. The function f has a denominator and this means that we must make sure that the values that will make the denominator equal to zero must be excluded from the domain. This means that x minus x squared is not equal to zero. Factoring, we have x times the quantity x minus 1 is not equal to 0. x is not equal to 0. Or x is not equal to 1. Therefore, the domain of f is the set of all x such that x is not is equal to 0 and x is not equal to 1. In interval notation, we have the open interval, negative infinity, 0, union, Open interval 0, 1, union, open interval 1, positive infinity. Next, we have a radical function. g of x is equal to the square root of 2x plus 9. Since g involves a square root sign, it is necessary that the radicand must be non-negative. Therefore, we must have 2x plus 9 is greater than or equal to 0. Solve for x, 2x is greater than or equal to negative 9. And dividing both sides by 2, we have x is greater than or equal to negative 9 halves. The domain there, therefore for g is the set of all x such that x is greater than or equal to negative 9 halves. Or in interval notation, that is the closed interval negative 9 halves positive infinity. Next, we have j of x is equal to x over the square root of 3x minus 5. This time, we have both a radical and a fraction. Thus, we must ensure that the radicand remains positive. In the previous example, we simply stated that if a function involves a radical or even root, then the radicand must be non-negative or that it must be greater than or equal to zero. This time, however, since the radical is in the denominator, we cannot allow it to be zero. 
and our restriction must therefore be for the radicand to simply be greater than 0. Then we have 3x minus 5 is greater than 0. Solve for x, 3x is greater than 5. Divide by 3 both sides, so we have x is greater than 5 thirds. So the domain of J is the set of all x such that x is greater than 5 thirds. In interval notation, that is open interval, 5 thirds, positive infinity. Next, where p of x is equal to the square root of x squared plus 3x plus 2. This given function is similar to the previous radical function except that we have a more complicated looking radicand. To find the domain, we must ensure that the radicand is non-negative. So we have x squared plus 3x plus 2 greater than or equal to 0. Factoring, we have x plus 1 times x plus 2 greater than or equal to 0. Then we're going to use the sign table. Let us divide the horizontal axis into intervals. Negative infinity, negative 2. Negative 2, negative 1. Negative 1, positive infinity. The basis for these intervals are the critical points in the given inequality, x plus 1 times x plus 2 greater than or equal to 0. Then we have the factors x plus 1, x plus 2, and their product, x plus 1 times x plus 2. So for any x in the interval negative infinity to negative 2, x plus 1 will be negative. x plus 2 will be negative and their product positive. For any value of x in the interval negative 2, negative 1, x plus 1 is negative. x plus 2 is positive and their product negative. For any x in the interval negative 1, positive infinity, x plus 1 is positive, x plus 2 positive, and their product positive. The solution of the inequality is then negative infinity, negative 1, close interval, union, close interval, negative 2, positive infinity, and this forms the domain of P. Representing real-life situation using functions. Functions are one of the most useful concepts in mathematics. There are numerous quantities used in business, science, and even day-to-day -day activities that can be modeled as functions. Let us have some examples. Give a function C that can represent the cost of buying X number of meals if one meal costs 75 pesos. So in here, x is the number of meals and its cost 75 pesos. So if you buy 2 meals, that will be 75 times 2. And if you buy 3 meals, that will be 75 times 3. So if you buy x number of meals, that will be 75 times x. So the function c of x is given by 75x. Next. A farmer finds himself with 400 meters of fencing available. He wishes to use this to enclose a rectangular area for his pigs. Express the area of the enclosure as a function of its width. What is the domain of this function? Let us start by drawing the diagram for this problem. A rectangular area where the width is represented by x. So we have 2x for the widths, and the length will be 400 minus 2x over 2. Since we have two lengths, the length will be equal to 200 minus x. We know that the area of a rectangle is equal to length times width. Therefore, the area as a function, a of x of the width, is equal to x times 200 minus x. By distributive property, a of x is equal to 200x 
minus x squared. And since the dimension of the rectangle cannot be zero, the domain of this function, A, is that set of all x's such that x is greater than zero and less than 200. Next, a jeepney ride costs 8 pesos for the first 4 kilometers. And each additional integer kilometer adds 1 pesos and 50 centavos to the fare. Use a piecewise function to represent the jeepney fare in terms of the distance d in kilometers. Let f be the function to represent the jeepney fare in terms of d. So we have f of x is equal to 8. If d is greater than 0 but less than or equal to 4. 8 plus 150 times the floor function d minus 4 if d is greater than 4. Notice that we use the floor function d minus 4 because if d is greater than 4, we need only to multiply those in excess of 4 kilometers by 1 peso and 50 centavos. And since we need to get the integer kilometer, we use the floor function, d minus 4. Next problem, a rectangular garden is to be fenced off with 100 feet of fencing material. Find the mathematical model expressing the area of the garden as a function of its length if one side of the field is to have a river as a natural boundary. First, let us draw the diagram. So let L be the length of the garden and A of L be the area. If we have 100 feet of fencing, then the width will be 100 minus L divided by 2. Therefore, A of L is equal to L times 100 minus L over 2, or A of L is equal to 1 half times 100 L minus L squared. That is all. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more math lessons.